We have four different examples here. Example one, we have an accelerometer. Now we activate it using a magnet. We call it the non-contact activation. Also you will notice on the screen there are three different graphs displayed. The X, Y and the Z axis. Now we tap on the device to measure the shock. We tap on all the sides so that we can measure the X, Y and the Z axis and also the positive and the negative values. Now we have the second example. We are going to test this on a running car. We have both the inclinometer and the accelerometer already installed. And you can see in three different graphs, the first two for the inclinometer and the third one for the accelerometer. The inclinometer records every turn and every front and backward movement. And the accelerometer for every shock and vibration. As you can see, when we make a left turn, that's a significant change in the graph. And for every bump, you can notice the accelerometer records it. This is happening in real time. The third example, we test the accelerometer on a loudspeaker. We play low frequency sound to determine the vibration. As you can notice on a zoomed in graph to your right side, every low frequency sound is recorded in real time. And lastly, we have a software Beanscape. We use Beanscape to monitor all the devices. Now we recognize the device by the MAC ID. Now we notice the last five numbers of the MAC ID. And then we click on one of the axes as the measurement is over. And then we go to the log file. And we recognize the log file by the last five numbers. Now we run our application called Scilab. And then we execute the FFT and PPV scripts. Follow the instructions. And we choose the log file. We follow the path. And then we select the file. Once selected, all the measurements are displayed and a spectrum can be analyzed. The maximum amplitude value is displayed there on the screen along with the linked frequency. Now we're going to analyze the amplitude value. We start PPV script by using the maximum amplitude value and the linked frequency we can now determine the peak particle velocity 